as he stepped into the arena of the huge circus, above the sound of the voices of thousands on thousands of spectators, he could hear the savage roar of the wild beasts from the cages below the floor in which he stood. Of a sudden, the silence of expectation fell on the spectators, for a signal had been given, and the cage containing the lion with which Androcles had to fight had been shot up into the arena from the floor below. A moment later, with a fierce spring and a savage roar, the great animal had sprung out of its cage into the arena, and with a bound had rushed at the spot where Androcles stood trembling. But suddenly, as he saw Androcles, the lion stood still, wondering. Then quickly but quietly it approached him, and gently moved its tail and licked the man's hands, and fawned upon him like a great dog. And Androcles patted the lion's head and gave a sob of recognition, for he knew that it was his own lion with whom he had lived and lodged all those months and years. And seeing this strange and wonderful meeting between the man and the wild beast, all the people marvelled, and the emperor from his high seat above the arena sent for Androcles and bade him tell his story and explain this mystery. And the emperor was so delighted with the story that he said Androcles was to be released and to be made a free man from that hour. And he rewarded him with money and ordered that the lion was to belong to him and to accompany him wherever he went. And when the people in Rome met Androcles walking, followed by his faithful lion, they used to point at him and say, that is the lion, the guest of the man, and that is the man, the doctor of the lion. End of the story of Androcles and the lion from the Animal Storybook, edited by Andrew Lamb, read by Rosie Grace.